Hey, what's up, guys? I'm uh, back out here getting a little more work done. Uh, we lost power for about 24 hours. We had a storm roll through with high winds, and it knocked a whole shit ton of power lines down and uh, knocked the power out for about 24 hours. But they got it back on so we can get out here working tonight. Um, we do have a generator, which is running, but it was sitting right here out on the back deck here. and That thing's louder than heck, and I didn't want to... Uh, it out here working have to listen to that thing for hours on end so so we skipped last night but we're back out here now and uh we got uh, almost everything in that we had coming that we needed we got almost everything for the brake uh conversion deal manual brake conversion and uh we got the fuel injector top hats that we were waiting on so that's good we can throw them in tonight which we will we also yeah, I think that's it. So, anyways, I'll show you what we got, and then we'll get started. Okay, guys, so here are the eight injector top hats for the Bosch 210s to fit uh, four-valve fuel rails. Um, they were... I got these off of eBay, and I believe they were... For eight of them, they were right around 65 bucks uh, with tax and everything out the door. Um, they do come with... Here, I'll go ahead and open one up, and I'll show you. They come with uh, filters... In, built into the top hat, which is nice, especially on large injectors. You need to make sure you, you filter uh, the fuel as best you can. Um, let's see if I can get the focus here. So you can kind of see it in there. There's a filter basket in there. Uh, these are the standard filter baskets. You can get stainless steel if you're going to be running fuel with uh, like methanol or something with uh, MTBE in it. You probably want to upgrade to the stainless steel. I think that adds another two dollars per hat, so sixteen more bucks to the price. At least where I got mine at. Um, comes with the O-rings on it and the clip as well from where I got them. So uh, we got these. Hopefully, I measured right and got the correct size, which I think I did. But we will know here shortly. Then. Uh, here are the brake lines that I finally, fittings that I finally got. Uh, this is your standard banjo, 10 millimeter banjo bolt. Um, we're going both and directly to the master cylinder. So I got two of them. One's an M12 by one and one's an M10 by one. So we got them. And then these guys here are the fittings that I had a hard time finding. So to go from them, uh, here, up, up there. to go from them male fittings from the stock brake lines to a dash three AN, uh, obviously you need female connectors. So I got two M10 by one female uh, bubble flare fittings to uh, dash three, and then this is a M12 by 1.0 male to dash three. Um, I couldn't find a female version like these in in uh, M12 by one bubble flare. So I had to get a male fitting and then on Amazon, I went and ordered a female coupler. So I'll have a female coupler. We'll screw on to that guy right there. And then I can screw the male end into the coupler and then go to my dash three. So basically it, it, it completes the same thing, but uh, you know, it's just one more coupler in line which sucks you hate to put more couplers in line than you need that's just more places to leak but uh i, I just couldn't find a female m12 by 1 to 3 a.n anywhere could find uh males obviously we got one but so anyways that's what we got and uh yeah i think that's uh the main parts that we got so we're gonna go ahead I think first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and throw the fuel injectors in, make sure them are good to go, and uh, we'll come back, but I'll show you. Go ahead and throw these in. All right, guys. So, we've got our injector here. Again, these are 210 Bosch's. Go ahead and get a little silicone on it. And the uh, over Off. So 
and get it snapped in there. Make sure you guys can see. Uh -oh. There's a little groove in here. If you look at the top of the ejector, you'll see the groove and that just snaps in there and then it locks onto the, the uh, hat. Move on top O-ring. Take the rail off. Let me get a Allen head. Take the top hat, slide it right in there, push it all the way in until it bottoms out. And I'm gonna test fit the first one to make sure I got the right size. slides right in there like that and then when the rails bolted down it'll keep this top hat in the rail and the uh, bottom o ring in the intake port so it'll be nice and uh, secure no leaks so let's go ahead and uh, slap the other three of them together <clears throat> remember the place where I got these from I'll have to look it up again but you can uh, if you look for them on eBay be careful because there's a lot of fakes out there um, China is making a bunch of fakes on the 210 Bosch's so just do, do your research and, and make sure you get legitimate Bosch's um, if the price is too good to be true and it probably is for eight to ten Bosch's you're gonna be you know expect to pay anywhere from you know five hundred dollars up to five fifty you shop around you should be able to find a set of real ones for that price and uh, anything if they're cheaper than that for eight of them uh, run because they're, they're not going to be real for new ones. I mean, you might be able to find used ones cheaper, obviously, but if you see some new ones uh, for, you know, $300 or $250 for eight, they're, they're not going to be real because they, they just, they cost more than that. You know, they're not going to sell them for less than they, than they can get them for. So just do your research and, uh, order them make sure that you they're real, like I said they're really short they're only 50 millimeters tall so uh, what is that like two inches so um, you know do some measurements so you know if you got to get top hats like I did I didn't measure I just assumed and I thought my uh, my uh, 25 millimeter or one inch injector hats would work but obviously they were too short still so I had to get one inch or 50 millimeter top hat so, another thing um, when you shop around is look for a place that uh, flow matches them. The place that I got them from, uh, you know, they buy hundreds of them at a time and then they take them all out and run them through the flow bench and and flow match them so they, they'll get you know if you order a set of eight they'll get a set of uh they'll get eight of the injectors that are that flow really close to each other i think they say within two percent is what they shoot for so they'll get eight injectors that are flowing within two percent and then, then they'll package them together as a set of eight for you and uh and then you gotta you know because even brand new Bosch's, you know 
you get them directly from Bosch or somebody that doesn't flow match them, you know, you could have a five or 10% difference, even brand new, legitimate Bosch's. So, uh, you know, it's worth the extra money. Or, I mean, the place I got them from, go look what it is. Uh, but they were on sale. They're normally like, I think they were 550 normally for a set of eight flow matched. Screwdriver, hold on, guys. Okay. Um, for a set of eight flow match, I think they're normally 50. They were, he was running a Labor Day or Memorial Day, I can't remember. Someday holiday sale um, when I bought mine. For, and he was running them for 500 bucks uh, for a flow match set of eight. So that's what I did. And, uh, they came in the mail and they were all good. So we'll know more when we run them. But they uh, came from an actual business. It wasn't just like an eBay seller. I ended up finding them on uh, Facebook marketplace to add up and I did a little research uh, on Google and people had pretty good luck with him you know not just on his injectors but he sold you know he's a performance shop so he's, he's sold all kinds of other parts and shit so he had good reviews so she got him seated all the way down okay I'll we'll grab our down head bolts and get these started. Okay, more a little snug. And that side is finished, guys. So there's that. Let's go ahead and plug them in. Hopefully I got the right connector. There's a couple different kinds of this actual connector. There's like a top, what they call a top mount, I guess, or, I don't know, but I think I got the right ones. So let's go ahead and uh, let's see how they go. Sorry. Okay, snapped on, that's good. guy here all right we're all snapped in there guys so, so there's that okay so uh Go ahead and I'm gonna knock out the other side and then we'll come back and uh, uh, move on to something else. You guys get these Sullivan rails. I almost uh, put this rail on and didn't realize there was a port underneath the rail on the bottom size side for, I guess, a uh, fuel pressure sensor. Uh, so pay attention to that. If I, if I wouldn't have noticed that, I'd have thrown that on. They weren't tight, they were just, you know, uh, lightly threaded in not even hand tight and uh, had a turn the pump on and it had been spraying fuel all over but uh, just uh, just know that they're there they're on both rails so you gotta take them out put some Teflon on them and, and run them in if you're not gonna use a uh, pressure sensor in them spots so just something I point out to you guys all right guys so I guess the next thing by the way I got them all finished up both uh, rails are on all eight injectors installed and plugged in next thing I need to do is uh, drill the uh, 
hole and then tap it, 8th inch MPT, for my uh, source uh, connection fitting to go to the boost controller, or to the wastegate. So uh, let's go ahead and get that drilled and then uh, tap it and we'll put the fitting in and then we can put it back on the uh, compressor housing and then we can sit that bad boy down in here and uh, yeah, then we'll be that much closer. All right, let's go ahead and get that done. All right, guys, so I don't know. This may be controversial. I don't know. Maybe not. You got a spider. You got to go, buddy. Uh, at least on some turbos come with an O-ring uh, gasket or seal on the compressor housing. These uh, 66 millimeter Borg Warners do not. And all it is is a metal to metal seal. Okay. Um, there's no o-ring groove on it for me to even install an o-ring so what I do is just put a thin bead of silicone in this grooved portion where the compressor cover actually mates down together okay there's a little step here you can see I just put a, a thin bead around here and then bolt the compressor housing on it and uh, you know it comes from the factory a lot of turbos come from the factory that way with no o-ring no gasket no nothing and um, it must not leak much, but I'm, you know, you, you got to think at 30 psi plus, it's got to be some kind of leak past this uh, machined uh, flange, you know. But it helps me sleep better at night if I put a little RTV there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and uh, then we'll slap this turbo on. So let's go. All right, guys. So unfortunately where I had the alternator mounted down there, I couldn't clear my turbo kit where it connects down to the manifold down there. I tried everything I could to get it to, to go around it, but it just, just barely t touched it. So instead of dicking around trying to get it to work down there, I'm just gonna put it back up here where it originally was. And uh, the only thing I really gotta change is uh, the belt. Obviously the belt's gonna be uh, quite a bit shorter so I got to play the guess what size belt you need game and uh, but no big deal I'll take this belt back and, and get the, uh, a shorter one and route it kind of like it is right now just obviously quite a bit shorter and uh, shouldn't be an issue um, I'll have to make a new uh, you know battery or power cable from the alternator down to a starter lug but no big deal um yeah it's unfortunate man i really wanted it to be down there kind of out of the way i think it looks cleaner looks better but what can you do so anyways i got this turbo mounted and it's all plumbed in everything's good to go um i think tomorrow i'll go ahead and put the exhaust on uh, both sides and then i can stick the fan down in there I gotta wire the power to the fan from that relay that's inside the car and uh, wire them boost solenoids and then I can run the uh, quarter inch line to the compressor covers where I um, you know tapped for the fittings so we got that stuff to do but we did finish up get the uh, injectors all installed and we made some progress on the brake deal. I got the fittings connected to it. I'm just waiting on that one last fitting that's supposed to be here tomorrow from Amazon. Um, and then that's kind of, I'm thinking where I'm gonna put the adjustable uh, proportioning valve right there. And then uh, 
that back line off the master cylinder is going to come to a T and split off to the two front lines and then that proportionally valve the outlet of that will go down to uh, the bottom line down there is for the rear brakes so it'll come out of that uh, the valve down to there so um, other than that I think that's pretty much wrapped up I and mean, then we'll obviously have to uh, bleed the brakes and do all that good stuff but but once I get that put on I can uh, clean up this wiring over here and that's really the last part of the harness that I got really messed with but then I can put my fuel lines on and man I mean really one good day of uh, wrenching on this thing not even really a day I mean if I busted butt and, and you know didn't take a break or anything I could probably have this thing ready to start in four or five hours probably but I'll take my time just to be you know make sure I got everything where it needs to be and uh, but I should be able to start it probably let's see today's so I'm, I, I'm probably looking Saturday-ish, say maybe Sunday. So I'll just say this weekend. Hopefully I'll get this thing running this weekend, have it started up, ready to go. Um, I do have to get this boost pipe. I don't have a TIG welder, so I'm going to have to take it somewhere to get it TIG, weld, TIG welded. I have a guy that's local to me that uh, he welded the bell housing where the bell housing was cracked. Um, that was cast aluminum. I mean, he did, he did a heck of a job on it. It looks super clean. So I'll I'll take the boost pipe. I'll mock uh, I'll mock it up, fab it up, you know, and then I'll either mark it with a marker or tape it the way that I need it, and then I'll take it up to him, have him take it on there, and uh, and be good to go. The blow off valve I can't show you. It's under it's behind the bumper on the intercooler. It's a China blow off valve. Uh, it was always locked up it never worked i guess i should say um ever since i put it on there brand new uh i took it apart took it off to change the spring and i found that the valve i, th I thought the valve was just way too heavy and it would just never open well i took it apart and the valve was seized in it you know per usual so i got the valve unstuck um, cleaned it up put uh and I seize on it and work the valve back and forth and I got to free up nicely. I put the correct spring that I need for the vacuum that this engine makes and I was able to pull a vacuum with my mighty vac pump and it opens up like it's supposed to. Um, right around 18 inches of vacuum and that's about what this motor pull. This motor pulls at idle about 18 to 19 inches of vacuum on my vacuum gauge so it should be perfect. It should stay shut um, at idle. And then, uh, you know, when I lift the throttle and it goes into a deep vacuum, it should pull the, the valve open and, and release the pressure. So hopefully that's good. I don't, I'd rather not have to order, you know, a name brand one, obviously save the money if I can, but if it, if it gives me problems, I'll end up replacing it and, and not dick with it. So, uh, but yeah, guys, that's, that's where we're at. It's unfortunate about the alternator, but I spent probably... I was probably out here five hours, four and a half hours today, and I spent probably three of that, three and a half of that, trying to get that turbo to mate up the V-band uh, flange with the alternator still down there. Um, but it just, like I said, it just wouldn't wouldn't work. I, I could have cut the V-band off that up pipe right there and came up with, uh, and re-welded a new flange on there maybe and, and got it to work, but that's, that's more than I want to deal with right now. I just want to get this thing going and get it to the track. So, like I said, it ain't, there's, there's no problem with the alternator there. It's just, you know, I'd rather not have it there. I think it looks better out of the way, you know, down underneath where you can't see it. And you just, all you can see is a, that good looking intake, but whatever, no biggie. We'll, uh, we'll make do with what we can with, you know, we'll make it work and, uh, and we'll move on. So. Stay tuned, guys. Like I said, we'll have a startup video. Hopefully, you know, hopefully I'll have it running this weekend and then I'll have a video up Monday-ish, hopefully. As long as no unforeseen, you know, issues come up, uh, that's what I plan on having it running. So, all right, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Appreciate you guys watching. Uh, we'll see you then.